And Gwen, uh, thank you for being with us. Uh, praise the Lord. So I'm going to turn it over to Brother Fred tonight, uh, who is going to be talking about power partners. Hallelujah. You know, Jesus promised us that uh, we can release great power through our prayers. So the title of the message tonight is Power Partners. And we want to see how to release this uh, great power. And, and of course, it's a verse that we're all familiar with. It's Matthew 18, uh, verse 19. And I, I want Sherry to start with the New American Standard and just read that. Uh, but I know we're all familiar with that. It says, again, I say unto you, that to, if two of you agree on earth about anything that they may ask, it shall be done for them by the Father who is in heaven. Okay, so that, that's a very familiar uh, promise. It's something that Jesus taught out of his own mouth. It says that we can basically release great power when we come into agreement. And uh, I know that uh, I've been in many different settings where that uh, verse has been referred to uh, when we began to pray. And in particular, uh, Sherry and I, when we were a young married couple, we would go every Wednesday night for prayer and we pray for a long list of people. And uh, we would always quote that verse uh, that uh, whatever we ask for, uh, if we come into agreement. So that verse refers to a, the power of agreement uh, that is released. And uh, what I saw, we would have many people, maybe 30 to 50 people every Wednesday praying diligently for uh, a long list of people who were sick, many of which had cancer, and uh, they all died. Uh, but we were told that those were prayers of agreement uh, that would release much power and that they would be healed, but they all died. And so there has to be something wrong with that approach. It's not about numbers. And so that's what I want to do tonight is to uh, elaborate on this concept and see if we can get down to the, uh, to the depths of it and to see what it really means. And, and I want to, uh, I, I think it's good to look at a, a, another translation of it because I've studied the, uh, the verse in, in the Greek and looked at these Greek letters and and the word for agree is a very interesting word. Uh, and I want Sherry to read it then out of the Amplified because I believe this is the closest uh, uh, translation to the original Greek. And so then we'll go from there. It says, again, I tell you, if two of you on earth agree, harmonize together, make a sympathy together, sympathy, sympathy about whatever, anything and everything, they may ask, it will come to pass and be done for them by my Father in heaven. Wow, now this is a totally different uh, point of view, but this is what the Greek is saying. We, we, we ha have to harmonize, and uh, God orchestrates. And so the Greek word here is the word that we get symphony from, a symphony orchestra. And so mm -hmm. if we're going to agree, then we, it has to be like God orchestrating our, our prayer and our agreement, and that's what's going to release great power. And that's the reason that uh, many settings that uh, I have been in over the years, uh, they, there was no power released. And so what I want to look at tonight is getting some people connected with us uh, and for you, who will be power partners? And what do I mean by power partners? Those are people who will inspire you and ignite the faith within you. I mm, mean, and uh, they will bring down heaven. They will connect with heaven, and so your prayer will bring the power of God, so that you can actually release the power of agreement. So let's see how we do that. And so it's about God orchestrating things. And so I want to say, first of all, uh, who is the, the power partner? Well, it, it, we're going to explore that. How can we find uh, people who are really powerful, who would uh, complement us, 
so that we could actually pray a prayer mm -hmm. of agreement and release heaven's power. That's the bottom line. That's what we're looking at uh, tonight. And, and it's very important. We all need to do it. And I know it's not in numbers. Now, there are a lot of prayers, a lot of prayers in the Bible, a lot of ways that we can pray, that we can pray. And so it's, uh, uh, there, and God answers prayers. He loves for his people to pray. Amen. But this particular prayer is very specific, and it requires us coming together with people who will inspire us and uh, ignite our faith and release the power of God. And so that's a real important concept, and it's not in numbers. I know uh, year after year, I've seen where the power of God was not released by numbers, and even though they claimed they, they were praying the prayer of agreement, uh, the power of God was not released in those situations. So it has to be uh, something else rather than just numbers. It, it's about, uh, of course, the whole uh, Bible, uh, about what the Bible says about prayers and what uh, releases the power of God. And, and of course, we know that uh, from James uh, 5, 16, that uh, fervent prayers uh, release mm -hmm. uh, great power. And so yes. this uh, power of agreement then has to be consistent with that. So it has to be a fervent prayer, releasing great power. A and uh, another uh, scripture that we know from Galatians chapter six says that you who are spiritual uh, restore those people who have problems. And, mm -hmm. and, and so I see that when we're looking for a power partner, uh, then we have to look for spiritual people. It's not intellectual people, but it's spiritual people. And so uh, you yourself are a spiritual person and you need to connect and partner with another spiritual person. Jesus said, when two of you mm -hmm. on earth. <clears throat> now, one of the things I know is that the <coughs> ultimate power partner is the Holy Spirit. Amen. Because he is the power of God. So you can you can certainly be led by the Spirit, and you, just by yourself, can pray uh, and ask the Father, and you can receive with your relationship with the Holy Spirit, you can release great power just by your relationship relationship with the Holy Spirit, but that's not this prayer. That's not Matthew 18, 19, mm -hmm. because Matthew 18, 19 uh, talks about agreeing with someone on the earth. So it has Amen. to be Amen. two people. And Jesus said only two. He said two, two people. And, and then you have, uh, and, and let me just use Sherry and I as an example, but we're not certainly limited to even a husband or wife or Sherry and I, but I just use as an example. Sherry has a relationship with the Holy Spirit and uh, she's a spiritual person. I can attest to that. I've been around her for a long period of time and I have a relationship with the Holy Spirit and I seek the Lord. And so I believe that she is a spiritual person and I am a spiritual person and we can come into agreement and release the power here. Well, mm -hmm. you mm -hmm. can do the same thing Amen. <clears throat> in your life. And it doesn't have to be with your spouse. It can be with somebody. But what I want to say tonight is that you need a power partners uh, so that you can tap into this particular prayer because it's going to release great faith. Mm -hmm. And the great ultimate, power. the ultimate, I mean, release great power, the ultimate a uh, power partner, of course, is the Holy Spirit. So you need a relationship with the Holy Spirit, but you need a relationship with other people on the earth who are spiritual, who can pray fervently and release the power of God. So we're we're looking at the Bible then in, in total and, mm -hmm. and not taking some concept out of uh, context. And I want to look at Matthew chapter 18. Uh, and so to put this prayer in 
context, uh, when I look at in context, what Matthew 18 is about is about the kingdom lifestyle. Mm, the whole chapter. <clears throat> so whole chapter. the whole chapter is about the kingdom lifestyle. So this prayer is about a prayer of lifestyle. It's not a prayer about just one problem or mm -hmm. one incident. And so I want to look at this tonight from a very long-term perspective. Uh, so uh, Jesus taught about several things in this chapter, but they're all related to lifestyle and a period of time. And the first one he was talking about uh, with his disciples was who was greatest in the kingdom, and he brings a child. And then he said, you have to humble yourself and to enter the kingdom. You have to be like a little child and humble yourself. So this is not a one-time uh, event of humbling yourself. This is a lifestyle of humbling, Humble, yeah. of humbling yourself, of walking in humility. He also said uh, in this same chapter, he, he talked about uh, don't sin, but, but not just don't sin. He said, if your hand causes you to sin over and over again, because we're talking about lifestyles now, if you, if you sin one time, just repent and and change your direction. <clears throat> but if your hand causes you to re to sin over and over again, and then just chop the thing off, well, that's pretty. <laughs> that's pretty severe, isn't it? But but that's we're talking about lifestyle now. Mm -hmm. He said also, if your foot uh, causes you to sin over and over and over again, just cut the thing off because we're talking about lifestyle. We're talking about the eternity. We're talking about eternal mm -hmm. things here. That's what this uh, chapter is about. Uh, eternal things and, and long-term things. And then the next uh, uh, thing that Jesus was uh, was talking about was about forgiveness. A and Peter said, well, can I just forgive seven times? And, <laughs> and he said, no, no you got uh, over and over. You gotta 70 forgive. times seven. You've got to forgive over and over. And see, it's a lifetime. This is a long-term. And so when you get down to this prayer, well, what's it about? It's about people who are spiritual, who have made a lifetime commitment to be spiritual because we're what we're looking for is how can I find a power partner to help me pray this prayer so that we can release the power of God because I know from this prayer uh, and what Jesus said in this promise that there is great power to be released and I want to I want to benefit from this promise. Amen. And each of us want to benefit from this promise. And, and I imagine we've all applied it uh, in our life. I've applied it over and over again, this, this verse, but I misapplied it because I didn't know what agree meant. I didn't know what the Greek meant here when he said agree. You've got to come into harmony. harmony. You, this has to be orchestrated Say by God. God. We have to, we're different, we're different, we're all different, but you know, you take a, what is a symphony made of? It, it's made of people with different instruments, and they're all, they're all different, and they all have different sounds, but when they come together, uh, and they harmonize, then mm. there is a beautiful sound. sound come forth. That's what we're talking about here on mm. agreement. What mm. agreement is, it's about harmonizing about it. Even though we are different, we're going to harmonize so that we're going to produce a beautiful sound to release it's the power of God. God. Well, after he uh, Jesus introduces this verse, continuing on in <laughs> chapter uh, 18, uh, he talks about the kingdom. And he says, there's the king in the kingdom, and he's taking account of what we're doing. And there was a man that came to him and owed him a lot of money, and he said, well, throw him in jail. And uh, then he, he got down and he, he begged for mercy. And so the king had mercy. And then the, and re, and got rid of all of the debt, released him from all of the debt. And then he got up. And he went out and he found somebody that owed him a little bit. And he, he was very harsh and very cruel to that person. See, we're, we're not talking about a single event. We're talking about a lifestyle. And so here's a man that asked God 
uh, for mercy, and then he turned around and didn't give mercy. mercy. So we're seeing, we're following uh, things over and over again. <clears throat> and there's another important passage in Matthew 18. It talks about the hundred sheep and one goes astray. Now this tells me why, if you have in your prayer chain a loose a Weak link. Weak link, your prayer chain is not going to work. See, there are a lot of people that have prayer chains out there, but if there's a weak link, and what do I mean by a weak link? Somebody that's not praying diligently, somebody that's not, not spiritual. Praying, praying in faith. Not praying in faith. Then that's a weak link, and that's going to stop the effectiveness of your whole prayer chain. And see, the what did the good shepherd do? When he had one that went astray, he left the 99. So you may have 99 that are praying diligently, but the one that goes astray, see, that's going to stop the effectiveness of everything. And the good shepherd uh, has to step away, step away from the 99 and go out there and find the one. Now, his intention, of course, is to bring back all of them. Mm -hmm. But this shows me that you cannot have a weak link in your prayer chain. And so that's the reason I had rather pray with one person or two people than with a thousand. And, and, and I have found mm -hmm. over my lifetime that it is much more effective to pray with spiritual people who pray fervently, uh, who are led by the Holy Spirit, and they can come into agreement. <clears throat> and, and so what is this agree agreement I, I'm talking about? It's that harmonizing. It's about being orchestrated by the Holy Spirit. So they're asking mm -hmm. what the Holy Spirit wants them to pray, how to pray. And, and you know, a lot of times in my own mind, I pray for the wrong thing, but the Holy Spirit knows what to pray for. So we ask the Holy Spirit. We ask first, and, and then we pray what, uh, what he says. Now, <clears throat> in finding someone, I want to start with a verse that uh, have Sherry to read Second uh, uh, Corinthians uh, 1 verse 20. And this is out of the voice uh, translation. It says, in Jesus we hear a resounding yes to all of God's many promises. This is the reason we say amen to and through Jesus when giving glory to God. Okay, now this is the point I want to make. This is a real important concept right here. Jesus is the one saying it. He's saying yes to a, a promise of God. Mm -hmm. Jesus is saying yes. And that is resounding to me. And as a result of that, I can say amen. So the promises of God are yes and amen. Mm -hmm. So that means mm -hmm. somebody has to say yes. Oh, and wow. somebody has to say amen. Mm -hmm. And when the person says yes, it has to resonate in my spirit. Mm -hmm. And then I can say, amen. Now, if, if I say yes, uh, and it resonates in her spirit, then she can say, amen. And see, then we're in agreement. It's got to be what I say, and I say yes to a promise, or, or I, I say, mm. this is what we're going to do. And that has to resonate in her spirit, and, and or vice versa. Mm. She says yes to a promise. This is what we're going to do. This is the promise because she's led by the Spirit of God. And it there's a it resonates. The sound that she makes resonates in me. And I agree with her. And see, now God has harmonized us oh, because yeah. there's this resonating voice and, mm. and this coming, this sound is coming, and it said resounding, and it's a deep sound that's coming in, and it's resonating in our spirit. Hallelujah. That's what this verse is talking about. There has to be somebody that's going to say yes, and that's got to resonate in the other person, and then there has to be an amen, amen. and that's when you come into agreement, okay? So this is the concept to look for a power partner. For you to look for a power partner that when they're when you know that they are spiritual and that they pray fervently and they're led by the spirit of God. And when they say something, it resonates in your spirit or 
if you say something, it resonates in that person. Mm -hmm. So God is orchestrating and putting you with people mm -hmm. that your spirit, that your spirit, what you're saying, and the words that come out of you resonate uh, to the other person, then that's who God is orchestrating to put together that they can release the power of God, uh -huh. great power of God. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> See, this is not just about us intellectually coming together and saying we're going to agree uh, for this sick person, or we're going to agree uh, about more money, or we're going to agree about... That's not an intellectual thing. It's 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 that resonating. There's a sound coming out. We've heard from the Holy Spirit. We're speaking it to the to our partner. And this is going to be a power partner. If when I hear by the Holy Spirit, I speak out what I hear from the Holy Spirit that resonates in her spirit, then she gets excited and she says, Amen. Hallelujah. That's what this concept is. We're going to be looking. And you need to be doing this for the rest of your life, looking for those people who are power partners with you, who, when they say things, your spirit resonates about it. And when you say things, their spirit resonates Amen. about it. Amen. Okay, so let's look in the Bible and see who did this. Well, I want to start with the Virgin Mary. Well, after the angel uh, Gabriel appeared to her and said, you're going to be overshadowed by the Holy Spirit. Oh, do you hear that? Mm -hmm. About the uh, by the Holy Spirit, a and you're going to have a child. His mm -hmm. name is going to be Jesus, and he's going to be the Savior to the world. Okay. So, what did Mary do? Well, she's not married, so she's looking for a power Our partner. partner. Amen. And what does she do? She jumps up yeah. and she runs, runs to, to the, the hill hills. country and finds Elizabeth. a cousin, Elizabeth. And when she comes to Elizabeth, she greets Elizabeth, and the sound of Mary resonates in, in, in the womb of Elizabeth, and John the Baptist in her womb leaves and is filled with the Holy Spirit. And Elizabeth is filled with the Holy Spirit, and John the Baptist is filled with the Holy Spirit because the sound that Mary spoke resonated inside of Elizabeth. And they, these are power partners. Mary, the mother of Jesus, and Elizabeth, the mother of John the Baptist, they were power partners. And there was that resonating and the leaping of inside of her because of the sound that Mary made. And, and, uh, uh, Elizabeth said, oh, what a blessing it is for you to come and to be in my house and, and for you carry the Savior of the world. Oh, Can you yeah. imagine that? Really? These are power partners. They understood each other, what was going on with each other. That's an example. Amen. 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 <clears throat> now, let me give you another example. Mm -hmm. See, good, brother Chris. Saul was king. He was anointed to be king. And, and one time, uh, Samuel, who had anointed Saul to be king of Israel, uh, Samuel told him to go out there and, and destroy an enemy to the people of God. And, and, and Saul went out there and he captured them and he kid, destroyed some, but he brought the best back. Oh, sometimes we mm -hmm. want to keep the best back mm -hmm. from God because, oh, this is good and I want to keep this and I... I don't want God to know about this, what I'm doing here, and, and these little uh, pets. So we want to keep these yes, pets. Yes, yes. Uh, uh, okay, so uh, he disobeyed what the Lord told him to do was to go to destroy the enemies of the pill of the children of Israel. He told him to destroy him, but he didn't destroy him. And so at that moment, he lost the kingship. Mm -hmm. uh, now he continued to be king for. for a uh, period of time, but God turned his attention away from Saul, and he turned his attention to David. Now, with Saul is his prince, is his son, uh, uh, Jonathan, and, and so Samuel goes and anoints David to be king, and so now you've got two different people anointed to be king, but see, Jonathan is the heir apparent mm -hmm. to be king. Mm -hmm. And now you've got David being groomed 
to be king mm -hmm. by God himself. Okay, mm -hmm. so here it comes, and, and you can see a possible conflict in the making between Jonathan, who is the heir apparent of the king, and David. And, and so here they are, they've come together, they've come into Samuel's uh, uh, house, and, and David begins to tell about God and mm -hmm. talk about uh, what God has showed him and what God is going to do. And this resonated with Jonathan. Mm -hmm. This what David was saying about God began to resonate inside. This sound from heaven comes resonating in, in Jonathan. And Jonathan said, Woo! I want you to have my sword. I want you to yeah, have my, my armor. Uh, armor. Yeah, and yeah. I want to have I want you to have my mantle. Now, when he gave the mantle, uh, when Jonathan gave his mantle to David, it meant that the kingship was being transferred from from uh, Jonathan. from Saul, which was supposed to go down to Jonathan, but it was being transferred to David instead. So Jonathan would never be king. And he transferred the, the lineage and, and the right mm -hmm. to be king because, and why did he do that? He, he's a, a seasoned warrior. He, he, had, he had had many victories, but yet David said some things and the mm -hmm. sound of what David said about his God and his relationship with God, it resonated oh, so much yeah. in Jonathan that Jonathan was willing to say, I'm not going to be king. This oh, is the king. Yeah. This is the king. Yes, he's Dave, the king. David is the king. I see it. And I'm just going to walk away and I'm going to support him I'm, because I know this is God's choice uh, to be king in this nation, not me. Mm -hmm. You see it, how it resonated, what David said resonated with Jonathan, and they became great friends. And 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 this is one of the greatest and examples power of power partners in the Bible, Jonathan and David. Whoa, and they could easily that. have been on different sides of battles and fought, and fought mm -hmm. against each, each other. other. But God orchestrated mm -hmm. and harmonized these two men and brought them together and revealed his plan to Jonathan mm -hmm. so that... Jonathan was going to support David to be king, and he wasn't going to to uh, rock the boat and say, "No, I'm going to be king, and we're going to kill you, David." No, mm, he didn't say mm, that mm. because what David had said resonated in him. You need somebody that when you speak to them, they see yeah. the vision, they see the dream, and it resonates in mm -hmm. them, and and they can. Uh, partner with you and the, and I call them power partner because they can draw down the power of heaven in, in, it, with you in your prayers. Hallelujah. This is what it's about. This is why just numbers praying doesn't work. It's about people that God orchestrates, puts, puts together, together and harmonizes uh, so they operate together, and and what's happening? What's one saying is resonating mm. in the heart of the other person. Oh, so yeah. what I'm saying to you is, you need power partners. Now the ultimate power partner, of course, is the Holy Spirit. But you and the Holy Spirit do not fulfill uh, Matthew eighteen nineteen. Mm. You need you and the Holy Spirit, and at least one other person and the Holy Spirit, two spiritual persons, two spiritual people. These are the ones who can pray the prayer of agreement and call down the power of God to change any situation. To you, there will be nothing impossible when you find your power partner. Amen. Now, Amen. I want to go back and just give a personal example, and obviously Sherry and I are power partners together. And there's nobody on earth that I would want to pray for me more than Sherry. And I believe the same thing would hold for her, that Amen. she looks to me for prayer. She doesn't look for people out there. She looks to me for prayer. And I look to her for prayer because we are power partners. And we call down the power of God and receive the benefits of this promise that Jesus made 
to all of us. Amen. All of us can do this and receive this promise, <coughs> but we have to have one power partner at least. Mm -hmm. Now you can find other power partners and a power partner that you're agreeing with the uh, this week may not be the one you need next week. You might need somebody else. But I'll, again, I want to go back to a uh, personal uh, relationship, a personal story, so that you can begin to understand what I'm teaching tonight, because this can be practical. See, one of the uh, power partners that Sherry and I have, we have lots of them. Uh, and, and sometimes if we were in Mexico, we would have somebody there. If we were in uh, Spain, uh, there'd be somebody else there because mm -hmm. we have relationships with people all over the world. And, and uh, But we have uh, one of our earliest uh, power partner. And you, if you've been on the Sunday night meetings, you've seen her. Her name is Rebecca Wheeler. We have been praying uh, in agreement uh, for over 40 years. And uh, I, our prayer time together, one of the first earliest memories I have of us praying together is when uh, she and her husband then, who's now passed away, uh, when their three or four year old boy, uh, we were down in downtown uh, Atlanta, Georgia, and he, we were in a store looking at some uh, musical instruments and he came out of the store and, and went away from where the cars were and we, he was lost downtown Atlanta yes. where there were cars going in every direction everywhere and he was he was gone uh for uh, quite a while and so we gra grab, grabbed hands there in front of this music store on the street and we prayed for his safe return yes a and uh, after maybe 30 or 40 minutes uh I saw he and my, uh, the little boys was uh, Michael, his name was Michael, and he was crossing a busy street, but an angel of God was with him, walking across, they didn't touch him, he didn't hold his hand, he was just walking with him, making sure he got safely across a four lane or six lane highway, uh, and he brought him, and uh, brought him to my arms, and I, I held him, and then the angel was gone, and so that was one of our, my earliest memories Thank of you. praying uh, with Rebecca, and so, he, but this has continued on in many, many days, oh, yeah, in many yeah. different ways, many uh, situations. So we've come into agreement. So see, this is someone I can agree with, and she can agree with me. And so she, she's going to go through something. She'll call Sherry and I. We'll go to her house, or or she'll come over here to our house, and we can pray in agreement. Now she's not the only one, but I'm just giving you an example here. Uh, and so we built a relationship. And so the relationship, uh, sure, the, our, ours has lasted over 40 years. And she is definitely someone we can come into agreement with and release the power of God. Uh, you need such a person as that. She's not the only one. And, and it's not because we have prayed together 40 years because we are now power partners. No, we, we were back power partners uh, at the Sorry, beginning. At the beginning. Because otherwise, how could her a little three or four year old boy walk across all of this traffic with all of these cars uh, and have an angel uh, escorting him if there hadn't been somebody praying, praying in agreement. agreement. And I want you to know, you need somebody that you can agree with. And uh, you may have a particular situation that you need somebody. You, you need to build relationships and, and uh, build relationships and and find people who are spiritual and and you yourself be spiritual and and have a relationship with the Holy Spirit and pray diligently and be a spiritual person who can restore things and make differences on the earth. Hallelujah. You need power partners. Amen. Amen and amen. You don't know yeah, when you're going to need. when you're going to need a prayer that will pull down power uh, from, from heaven. heaven. Amen. All right. Thank you for being here. Today. Amen. Amen. Sherry, I'm going to turn it over. To you. Amen. That was an excellent message. Excellent message. My spirit man is leaping on the inside of me because I know how important it is to have someone that will actually agree with you according to the word of God and, and will release that power uh, that's needed in our situation, whether it's 
uh, you're going through a sickness or a disease or are uh, relationship issues or you've got a child that needs uh, salvation or deliverance or whatever it might be, uh, then there's a time in each one of our lives that we need uh, someone that we can agree with, according to Matthew 18, 19. And uh, that was a that was a outstanding um, uh, 